Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave, and today we're talking municipal bond ETFs. So if that doesn't get you wet, I don't know what will. Hey, easy, sugar mouth. But uh, these are two that we're gonna be talking about today. And I think they work really well in taxable accounts. And that's what I've been doing. I, I save up my money. And a lot of it's after tax. So I can put it into tax efficient products like municipal bond ETFs. Again, very exciting. So why would it be investing in this? Well, we're gonna cover it all. If that is what you're looking for, please stick around. Whoop. So about a year ago, I made a video on four different bond ETFs. If you like this type of idea, you can go watch that one as well. I'll link all that information above. Since then, I've talked about TLT and LQD and how I like to use options with those particular products. Now that it feels like the Fed rate has topped out, feels like we've got inflation under control and the next move is expected to be a rate cut. Expected. We don't know, but it's expected. So I'll link all those videos if you want to go watch that as well. But today we're talking about municipal bonds. So let's start with a little bit of story time. You are going to love this story. I promise you. It's got fencing, fighting, revenge, giants, monsters, true love, and miracles. I haven't posted a video for a little while because I was traveling out west. We did the old summer family vacation, and it was, it was great. We went to Sedona, Arizona. And uh, wow, that's a beautiful place. I had never been, and uh, I would highly recommend it if you get a chance to go out there. Then we went up to the rim of the Grand Canyon for one day. We looked into the abyss. It's awe-inspiring. I don't have to spend too much time there. One day was perfect, but it was very cool to see. Maybe I'll hike it at some point in the future. And then we headed over to Las Vegas, where our poor kids that are still teenagers weren't able to participate in any of the fun stuff. But they got to see it, got to experience it, um, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Now, I think back to my older vacations from a few years back, five, six years, it always felt like we hit about that four to $5,000 range, right? For a nice little bougie vacation, maybe Florida, somewhere else. I'm talking staying in the U.S. But in this case, we went out west and we did, it was a little bougie in this case, and we spent, we're over 12 grand for this thing. So is, is that the new standard? Am I expected to spend 12 grand whenever I take a family of four out west? My money, my problems. Yeah, inflation has definitely taken a hold and it's not going to be giving anything back. It's here to stay, but it is on the decline. The rate of inflation is on the decline. So when I got back, I started seeing different articles as well. I'm looking at Disney. They're uh, cutting hotel room rates and they're giving reduced prices on park admission. And then I saw Delta. They're, they're cutting back on uh, ticket prices. They're slashing prices, right? They're not, they got to fill those planes up. So these are the kind of things that give me the idea that the economy is softening and that the Fed has done their job and their next move should be a rate cut. Will it be? But if And if it is, what is the effect that it's going to have on some of these bond funds? So in the case of something like TLT, which is long duration bonds, whew, that thing could fly through the roof. Good product to be in. If you're in it, again, if you're in it for the last five years, it's been terrible. You might be picking up some of that uh, value. It might be coming right back to you here if we start to see rate cuts. So you might consider something like TLT or LQD if you feel that the Fed is going to be cutting rates in the not too distant future because that will drive those fund values up. Reasoning behind that is because newly issued bonds don't pay as well. Old bonds that are already in there will be paying better in comparison. That'll drive the fund value up, probably back to where it was historically a few years ago. So you can kind of go back and look at that and see what the reaction was like as they started to raise rates for LQD and TLT. But today I wanna to look at two products that I own, that I like, that are municipal bond funds. And the reason that I like municipal bond funds is because I'm an oversaver. That's right, I invest into my 401k routinely, but I also take after-tax dollars and I invest it into different brokerage accounts by all kinds of things. But I like it to be tax efficient because I'm a pretty good earner. I make a lot of money, I do pretty well. So having tax efficient products makes a lot of sense for me as I invest. So something that might only yield 3% when I consider my tax rate here in Ohio State and Fed, that 3% turns into about a 5% equivalent rate of return versus cash sitting in a money market. So for me, I'm moving some money over to these types of municipal bond funds, locking up that 3% with the expectation that cash is going to start to pay less in those money market accounts. And the muni bond fund has the potential of going up in value as new bonds that are issued pay less. So first of all, this is the federal funds effective rate that I'm referring to. And if you go all the way back to the late eighties, we were up near 10%. So how old are you? What's been your life experience? 
you were 18 years old back here in uh, 2009, you've pretty much experienced low rates. So this might be shocking to you at 5.33%, but for an older investor, this doesn't seem like much. So could we go higher? Well, certainly based on past history, we could, but based on what we're seeing, the economic data that's coming out, it certainly feels like the Fed will be lowering rates in the near future. So I should emphasize that the Fed has no obligation to start cutting rates. It just appears that that is uh, going to be their next move. Uh, so that's my premise for this video and my thought process behind why I'm adding to these two positions, moving from cash to these types of holdings. So in this case, my first one is VTEB. Oh, and by the way, I am a Seeking Alpha affiliate. All this information is coming from Seeking Alpha. There's a discount down below if you're looking for a stock and ETF research tool. So the first ETF on my mind here that I've been buying is a VTEB. This comes from Vanguard. It is tax exempt. That's why I like it in my after-tax account. Expense ratio is 0.05%, pays every single month at an annual rate of return of about 3%. It's got $35 billion of assets under management. And you might be looking at this five-year chart. I pulled that up specifically because you can see that decline when rates were rising um, and where we ended up and uh, where we might return to if we start to see rate cuts. Uh, so that's one of the ideas behind an investment like this. Not only do you get that 3%, which might be equivalent to your cash rate of return depending on your uh, tax situation, but you might also get a nice little boost in the long term if rates are cut. Uh, if we look at holdings for this particular one, you're going to see that it's it's quite broad. Uh, we've got uh, 10,336 different holdings in this case, and uh, these are going to be high quality, tax exempt, municipal bonds. And it is important to mention bond duration for these two ETFs. So for VTEB from the Vanguard website, we're looking at an average maturity of 13.9 years and an average duration around 6.4 years. So this will only have a mild reaction to decreases in interest rates. Something like TLT for comparison's sake here will certainly have a more significant reaction. Uh, the price will be driven higher in TLT. And here's a quick look at the bond quality in VTEB as well. So I see this as a good trade-off versus cash and or T-bills in my taxable account. Now, if we jump over and look at my second one, not so much, but you do get a higher yield for taking on high yield muni ETFs. In this case, it's HYD. And that's my second one. And I blend these two together. Uh, so in this case, I don't like the expense ratio of 0.32%, but I tolerate it and I buy some shares, yielding 4.28%, so considerably higher for taking on more risk. Uh, only $3 billion of assets under management, and you can see that over the five years, it had a bigger reaction uh, to those uh, uh, rates going up as they increase rates. So this one, if we look at the holdings, uh, we're going to see uh, only 1,471, so less holdings. And you can see just probably by reading through these that the quality is, is not there in comparison to uh, VTEB. So uh, that's the trade-off. But I like to blend these two together. And overall, uh, I'm getting about 3.6%. Blend it together. Uh, and that's more than equal to the 5%, but I, might, but I am taking on a little bit more risk. And again, here's the average years to maturity for HYD, currently sitting at 18 years, and duration sits at 6.57, similar to VTEB, we're in that intermediate range. And as far as bond credit quality, well, there is going to be a significant drop off with HYD versus what we saw in VTEB. So you need to make sure that you're comfortable with that additional risk with HYD. As far as performance over the last year, just as a comparison, you can see you've had a little bit better return, which HYD at 5.63%. And with VTEB, we're looking at 3.11%. Again, we're looking at total return for both of these funds. So blend that together, figure out your tax rate and see what it looks like versus your cash equivalent and adjust for what you think the potential risk would be in these funds. So I am moving some of my cash to these two positions. I know it's really exciting, but I'm making about 5.1, 5.2% in cash currently. 
But I, I think that might be going away. So I want to be a little bit more balanced. So I'm moving into these two funds. So the math would look a little something like this for my tax situation and my after-tax account. It's critical. But we're getting about 3% from one. We're getting, uh, what, 4.28% from the other one, which gives me an average around 3.64%. So if we just balance those 50-50, for example. Uh, we would take that. My tax rate's around 37% tax bracket in my money market account. So if I take one minus that, I get 0.63%. Divide that by 0.63, magical, and we get about 5.7, 5.8% comparable rate of return to that money market. So I'm doing better moving into this, uh, but I am moving out of cash a little bit more, taking on a little bit more risk. So that's that's the game plan. So not a huge ordeal or a huge rate of return. I do get that. I know I'm going to hear about it. But I've kind of got used to that 5 to 5.2% rate of return on my cash sitting in that money market account. And if that goes away, I'll be so sad. So I'm locking that up and I'm being tax efficient in municipal bonds. Sounds pretty good. So that's kind of the game plan. So I can still get that every single month and be tax efficient. Sounds great. So if you have any questions on this, please uh, ask down below. Uh, Please like and subscribe if you like this type of content. And look out for my uh, website. I have one coming, a newsletter, all that exciting stuff. So uh, again, like and subscribe if you're looking for this type of information. And uh, have a great night. We'll see you soon. Take care.